I'm Sean. Um, Pion is a collection of tools that aims to make the best for the next generation of RTC and WebRTC and peer-to-peer. -peer. There's a lot of interesting projects out there that aren't really served by the technology we have right now. Pion itself is open source. There's not a company behind this. It's a collection of people. So even though I'm standing up here today, these are the people that make Pion possible. Um, if you're looking to contribute and make a difference in empowering this next generation, be it you care about making you know, the new, new products interesting, if you care about something like IPFS and making the internet more free, we'd love to have you come and contribute and we'd love to, uh, we'll talk about later how, how easy we try to make that. So first off, if you're building something, um, I come from a background where I was building WebRTC products. I built some, some things in streaming, I built some things in gaming, um, and these are, these are the things that I wish I had that then I set out to build. So the first immediate benefit, it's 100% in Go. Um, the benefits of Go, if you've ever used it before, but for me, these are the big ones, is the fast iteration. Um, it's very important when you're building to go quickly, be it you want to roll out new features, be it a, a customer complains or a user complains, you need to debug quickly. If I can send off a single Docker file and build really quickly, that's important. Um, if you're taking time to build up and you know, run a make file, build some C stuff and, and roll everything down, that's, that's costing you time. Um, so this is fast iteration. You can build the entire Pion code base. It's you know, 500 kilobytes in seconds. Um, deploy anywhere. Uh, Go is incredibly portable. So with this code base, you can, you can target mobile, WASM, servers. So with one code base, um, I can build anywhere. So I can build a single, stat, fatic, um, a single static binary, and I can just drop that in and move that anywhere. So I can build for Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, and just send it off to anyone. The other benefit is you can build a shared object with that. So we have one user that has a game that they're distributing to Android, they're distributing to um, phones, and they just have one single code base with a nice little two C calls, you know, start my session, end my session, and they just pass around to that. So they can write the majority of their code base in whatever language they prefer, but just have a nice library that they can use. Um, the other benefit is GoDoc. If you've ever you know, browsed, browsed a C or C++ code base, all the documentation is sort of an arbitrary format. You know, every time you have to learn something new. GoDoc is standard, it's on the web. If I want to jump to anything, it's very simple. Uh, Pion is an API you know. So if you've written anything in the browser, you already know it. You create offers, set remote description, you have all the ability to probe your ICE candidates, get parameters. This, you shouldn't have to learn a new API. And the other issue is if you do have a new API, there's going to be over, like, things that they missed. The nice thing is I'm just depending on all of the things that all, you know, people today have, have thought over and talked about. And scaling requires flexibility. How many times have you built using something proprietary and find yourself, oh, I, they didn't think about this edge case, or they didn't think about like, how am I going to you know, scale out to this? This makes no assumptions. If it is the WebRTC API, it's what you expect. Um, you can mold it to whatever way you want. It's split into subsystems. So Pion, since it's 100% in Go, we had to write everything from scratch. We implemented DTLS, we implemented SCTP, we read the RFCs and, and did it all. So the nice thing about that is it's easily to, I can easily ship a different version of any package. So Many times you upgrade WebRTC, you'll have a bug in ICE, but everything else will be perfect. And all of a sudden that holds everything back. If you use Pion, you can pin a single subsystem and you can debug into that subsystem. These are important when you want to isolate an issue. Uh, you know, if all of a sudden you upgrade and all of a sudden things fall apart, I can just, you know, one at a time, downgrade this package, downgrade this package, downgrade this package, and figure out, oh, it's a bug in ICE. And this has saved people a lot of time. Um, the other thing is adding custom behavior. So a lot of you here, people are trying to build analytics. They've probably patched LibWebRTC. They maintain forks. I see a lot of people, you know, they're stuck at 50 and they can't find a way to upgrade. So what I can do is any of these packages, here's the package graph and all these packages we've exported. I can say, okay, I want to ship my own version of SRTP. So I can ship the official version of Pion, but just for that single one, I can add a replace statement and say, okay, I'm going to go to bitbucket slash my private repo and pull my version of SRTP. Now all of a sudden you can have a customized version and as long as you satisfy the public interface, you can ship that forever. So gone are the days of having to worry about how am I going to customize this little part, I want to keep rolling forward. Like yes, you're going to still, if we 
expand that public interface, which we'll probably do to add more features, you're gonna have to move them over. But the nice thing is you don't have to worry about the entire code base. You just have to worry about this little package. And, and as usual, if you add an interesting or feature or a bug fix, we'd love to have it upstream as well. There's no reason it should have to sit in your code base. Um, the media is completely decoupled. So a lot of our use cases, we, f we see that people want to send pre-recorded media, they want to slurp up you know, RTMP, they want to do other things like that. Pion, you have RTP senders, and you can write H.264, VP8, or you can write pre-constructed VP8 packets. So I can easily you know, listen on a UDP socket and, and take in RTP and then relay it out. So all of a sudden, you can build all those custom things you want. The other benefit is you can use any media stack you want. I'm sure everyone out there has used FFmpeg, they've used GStreamer, all these great things. Um, you can still use the tools you like and know. Um, with this, I've seen a lot of interesting things. I've, this one I just saw recently, Gunk, um, a user has built something where it can take an RTMP and instantly flip out WebRTC and HLS, and it's so easy to use. You just type go get that code base, and all of a sudden you have a server locally that can take an RTMP and spit out WebRTC. It's super interesting, and there's even more additional protocols, like they've been playing around with um, some proprietary ones and SRT. Um, ahead of the curve, so it's really easy to make, to make changes to it. You know, Unified Plan was like a 50-line PR. It's, it's nice that we have those 10 years of foresight and we didn't have to go through all the same things. Um, we had quick support last year, which was really cool. A user contributed via the ORTC constructors, and some people are already using that. Uh, WebAssembly is a really interesting one. So you can write one code base and deploy your back end and your front end with the same code. So because we satisfy the same public interface that was you know, declared, we first run our, we run our entire code base in Go, then we compile to WASM, and we run the same test suite entirely again in the browser to confirm, like, do we actually satisfy what the browser does as well? So you can imagine we have a company that they have, a, they have all of this you know, code that's doing signaling and all these fancy things, and they don't want to have to rewrite it. So the nice thing, they write it once and go, and they're done. Uh, VNet, how often have you built a product, deployed it, and realized, I have no idea how it's going to perform in the field? I didn't think about NATs. I didn't think about the latency. I didn't think about the packet loss. With VNet, you can pass, you construct virtual networks, and you pass them to the constructor. So I say, OK, I'm going to connect these three peers with 10% packet loss and this kind of latency. So don't wait until you deploy to figure out these problems. With Pion, you can just sketch out your simulated networks and go at it. And in the future, we want to also provide like pre-built ones where you're saying, OK, if, you're, if you have your test suite and you think you're ready to go, why don't you take a loop through ours and make sure that all your tests pass? And the bringing your own logger, this one saves me so much time. So how many times have you hit, you know, you go to use with some browser that's a little different than the others, and it blows up in DTLS? Like, how frustrating is that? You're like, I don't even know where to be. And you, you pull up Wireshark, you start to debug things. Nothing goes how you expect. With this, I can set trace logging just in the DTLS component. Because we've written everything ourselves, we've, we've put all of the logging that you would expect in every single, comp single component. I can you know, see what flights DTLS is going through. I can dump the actual bodies of the packets. And, the, um, and we're going to see even better stuff. Um, someone in here who's a contributor actually added working added PCAP support, which is going to be great, because we're going to be able to tell users, oh, I'm having a problem. Well, add this one flag, and it'll build up a zip with, all, with everything, you know, your SDPs, your PCAP, and we can figure that out pretty quick. Um, and then we want to see more. Like, Pion is built by people that are trying to support their own products. So if you have interesting ideas, we'd love to hear them. And we can, we'll figure out how to get a hold of us in the next slide. So it's time to build. You've, you want to build this new code base in Pion, where do you even begin? Um, we have a Pion knowledge base, which we're working on building out. It's definitely not where it needs to be yet. But the idea is, since we implemented all these things ourselves, we want to get all the RFCs, all of the stuff that we you know, suffered through, and not make other people have to do that again. Um, so this isn't just like, here's how to use Pion. Like, we want to empower people that are building their own WebRTC stacks. We want to empower people to do everything. So we were working with someone who was, who was working on the 
Erlang implementation, and we were talking, and also there's a Node RTC is another implementation that's coming out, and we've been working with them. Like, we want to see an implementation in every language that's portable. Like, this, this isn't just, you know, this is a, a language that everyone should be speaking. Um, we also have our Slack that we'd love you to join. This isn't just to talk about Pion, but anything WebRTC. Um, we have people in there discussing problems. We have people in there, like, you know, showing off RFCs they want to talk about and other products, like we don't really care. Like we just want to create a community that people can have quick communication about WebRTC. You know, there's a couple other places you can communicate right now, but the, the feedback time is slow. Maybe, you know, it's, you don't have all the tools you need. So this would be a great place to start. Uh, this is one that I'm, I'm personally most proud of is the public governance. So right now when you contribute to Pion, if you land that, you instantly become, you have a commit bit and all that it takes is one sign-off from another contributor. Um, it's amazing how quickly people make improvements. Very often I have someone who joins a channel and says, I have a little bit of feedback, and it's, you know, it feels you'd want to ignore them because you feel personally you know, attached to your code, but I'm amazed at how many mistakes I've made that other people have corrected because of that. So we have people that they contribute one thing and they rewrite so much stuff and it's so much better, and it's, and it's awesome, like we, we want that. So we have a public roadmap, we, there's no private bugs or features, I think a lot of times you'll see that in IRC you, you'll have you know, the project channel and then project hyphen dev. Um, I never want to do that. We always want to keep it open to everyone. We want there to, to always be insight into what the developers are doing. So now I, um, with Pion, there's a bunch of projects out there you would expect. We have people that are doing SFUs, MCUs, all the projects that you, know, you would expect someone to write. But I'd like to talk about some of the more interesting ones that really show the flexibility of using you know, something that's a building block and not a final product. So this is the first one I saw that really excited me is WebTTY. So um, all you have to do is paste an SDP into your terminal in your browser and they can start talking to each other. And this is super handy for helping people debug at first. And I was like, oh help, you know, I'm trying to write this little thing. So I'm like, okay, send me, drop this SDP and we'll jump in Vim. And there's no man in the middle. In a lot of other services you'll use, you're sending their communication up to you. And even if it's encrypted, do you really want people, you know, you don't, you don't want to have to send your traffic through them. So this, is, this browser and this terminal are directly communicating and they're perfectly synced. Um, the other benefit, is at a lot of small companies, you usually have like a jump server and then you'll, and you'll use that to get into your backend servers. Don't put your public servers on the internet anymore. With this, keep them all behind a NAT and just jump right into them this way. Um, how often are you frustrated that you have to start X11 to do a conference? That's just the worst. Um, someone wrote this uh, ASCII RTC, so instead you can, you can talk to your friends just with ASCII R. So this is a super powerful thing and um, we'd love to see this in the future. And the idea is it's gonna jump you into a, a random room as well, so you can just talk to someone and have this like, great representation. Um, RTC tunnel. So this was demoed by someone at a New York um, meetup, and it was super cool, is they wrote something that will tunnel TCP services to your browser. And so they demoed like, oh, I wanna use Redis for my browser, how do I do that? So they send all of the traffic to you know, a jump server in the back and then out to Redis. I think this is fantastic. Like, I would love to see this. You know, anytime I, I go to a startup's website and they show me their service, I don't want to have to download it. I'd like to just sit there and use it right on the website. Um, so the Redis, SSH, like all of these things should be available from the browser. And they were talking about a cool one. Like, this is maybe how we can get to the point where we have you know, a browser-based IDE. So keep all the files on a remote server, but jump into your browser and have access to them. Like, don't just do, do more than maybe just like sending capture. Um, here's a super popular one, is with 60 lines of Go, we can hook up Go CV and Pion. And so if you're interested in building you know, computer vision stuff, that's all it takes. Is, and that's avail available in our example repository. And the last one is someone wrote an NES emulator <laughs> that takes all of your keystrokes, sends them to a server on the back end, and sends the gameplay back to you. And it, um, it really works perfectly. It's amazing how fun and how easy it is to play. Um, I don't feel any lag on it. Um, and in the future, we're hoping to expand it to other things. Um, this is like a great first thing, but I think, you know, this will be great for really anything. You X11 and do, you know, virtual frame buffer and capture them and we'll send them back forth. So we hope to expand this soon, but um, this is a fun one to see. And then people are also playing with friends and saving their games in the cloud. So go and check that out and 
take it, you know, take it for a spin. It's cool. So thank you very much. Um, what I do want to say is that Pion, that we'd love to have you involved. Um, not only do I want to just have people from the open source community, but if you're building paid products, I'd love to talk to you, you know, either in our public Slack or feel free to email me personally or PM me. What I really want to do is I want to see this get better for everyone. The better that we make this, you know, the easier it is in the future for people to build products and we can empower some of those open, important open source projects that are trying to do, use this for you know, things that we all love. So thank you. Thank you.